Okay, hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on my review of The Wishing Horse of Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson, book number 29 in the Wizard of Oz series. So as always, I'm going to read you the blurb, I'm going to go through and check out my tabs. Spoiler alert, I've only just started, so I only have one tab. And then I'll share my overall thoughts on rating at the end, so... Dane reads... The Wishing Horse of Oz, in which three emerald necklaces cause everyone in Oz to forget all about Princess Ozma, the Wizard, and Glinda the Good, and acknowledge instead a fat old king named Scamperoo as supreme ruler. The mystic enchantment is responsible as well for the appearance of the glorious Wishing Horse, the most magnificent white steed imaginable. Only Dorothy and Pigasus, the flying poetical pig, can save the realm. So. My first tab is on the first page, and I remember what it is because it's just the coconut is spelled weird, uh, which has happened before. So it's spelled C O C O A N U T, which I assume is just an archaic way of spelling it. A couple of tabs here. I like some of the uh, the jokes here. Um, Scampavia is a dull little kingdom, a dumb little kingdom, a king dumb. That's a good name for it. And another one of the puns. Just give me the gist of the matter. Just give me the gist. There, I've made a joke. And it's these puns that, to be honest, make these books still worth reading for me. Uh, I quite like the exclamations we get as well, so one of them here is Great Garu! And another exclamation, Oh, good goats and gravy! We get this incredible little line here. I don't like the use of the word wonderingly. You guys know my feelings on adjectives and, you know... So adjectives, yeah, adjectives. Uh, how in Thunderation thought Mattia wonderingly, had this fat, silly monarch ever managed to hit upon such a magnificent and breathtaking wish? But I love that how in thunderation. I'm going to use that. We get a typo as well, so we get TikTok, the mechanical man. And we get TikTok could talk, think, and more about as well as anyone when he was wound. And I think it was meant to say, and move about. But we do love TikTok, he's a good character. So another great exclamation here. A great honour. Well, I should snickety wicker. Let's move the camera, try and get some better lighting. No. It's too bright outside today. So, um... The, the guard of, the, 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 the army of Oz, the one soldier with the green whiskers, his whiskers get turned red. And Scrap says, do they hurt? A red whiskers painful? And the soldier goes, they, they hurt my feelings. Oh yeah, and then everybody forgets who Ozma is. Uh, Dorothy looks pleadingly down the long board from the hungry tiger at the head to the cowardly lion at the foot. Can't be doing with pleadingly. And then Dorothy bends coaxingly over Piggins. Again, what's with all these, these ad adjectives? Or these adverbs. I don't even care anymore. Pigasus says, uh, With me, people are like eggs, either good or bad. There's no such thing as a nearly good egg. It's got to be completely good or it's just as bad as a bad egg, you see? Kind of deep. I like that like little bit of philosophy there. And Dorothy goes, Maybe there's no harm in being black. Um, it's not a, it's not a racist thing. Uh, they all get turned black in like, this black land. Everything's black. And, and then they get invited to dinner there, and we get, Do you suppose it'll be a black dinner? whispered Pigasus, trotting briskly along beside Dorothy. A herd of light repasts, but never of dark ones. Um, and let's find out. Here we go. We have a list of what they eat. Um, although the dinner in the Black Castle was as dark a repast as Pigasus had predicted, never had he or Dorothy dined more royally, nor partaken of more delicate fare. The black bean soup was followed by a black fish course, then came the dark meat of some superbly cooked fowl, probably cinder roosters, as Pigasus remarked in one of his humorous asides. The licorice was the most delicious of the vegetables, though the black asparagus and potatoes were appetizing too. Black bread was served with a black grape salad, and plum cake with black frosting with the black ices and black briade. The members of Gloma's house Soul, now that their fear of Dorothy had been explained away, proved so interesting and merry, the time simply flew. The black lace frocks of the women and children and the soft leather suits of the black foresters were simple but elegant, and the black queen herself, so lovely just to look at her, gave one a curious thrill. General Blotz, recalled from banishment by Blackjack, the Queen's pet jackdaw, proved a singer of no mean ability and regaled the company with many famous black ballads and hunting songs. Pigasus, too, contributed to the general fun and gaiety with some of his best songs and verses and ate so many slices of the black plum cake, Dorothy began to feel positively uneasy. Sounds like a right old, right old laugh, a bit of a sesh. Alrighty, a few more Oz tabs, two on the same page here. So we get another great ex expression, botheration. And on the same page, we also get Rooks and Rocket. And then we get Schufenwala, who is one of the uh, gnomes. Um, he turns from Pigasus with an involuntary grimace. Pigs reminded him of ham. Ham reminded him of eggs. And eggs were immediate death and destruction to gnomes. 
Um, and then that's all I tabbed out. I didn't really get much from the last third. Um, interesting little arc to this. I like the fact that everyone kind of forgets who uh, Ozma is. We get Dorothy being like a really key character throughout this, um, which doesn't, you know, it hasn't happened for a while. She's really been more of a background character. Um, but it, it's weird. It's one of those stories where it kind of like goes, whoop, whoop. So the middle bit is kind of has all of the triumphant shit, you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, I did enjoy it. I, I just think it's a very odd little uh, entry into the series. 3.5 out of 5, relatively strong one. Um, one of my favourites of the recent Oz books. And um, yes, if you've, if you've read this far, keep reading. And uh, I'll let you know how the next one is. So there we have it. That's what I made of The Wishing Horse of Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.